Welcome everyone. Adam the Woo here. I have arrived in Mount Airy, North Carolina. The hometown where he was born, raised, grew up, and also Andy Griffith there. Seen from the, you know, the fishing hole spot from the intro of every episode of arguably one of the greatest TV shows of all time with Opie. I've been here before, but it has been many years ago, and I'm here to document other items that I have not seen, as well as a little more in-depth than my, oh. I'm inviting you to join me. And I have a special surprise a little bit later, which I've never done before, it's, it's a good one. I'm inviting you to join me. Shall you? I'll return back over to the museum a little later, but this is a good little correlation of some of the items around the area and how they pertain to the subject matter. It's just right here next to the museum. I'll, be, I'll come back over here in a little bit. One thing that's really nice is they fully embrace everything about it, which is a good thing. I made it about a mile away. I was distracted by the squad car a few moments ago. And forgot to mention that Mount Airy is the inspiration for Mayberry from the television show and a lot of things that happened here went on to become parts of episodes. The real life Mayberry and I do believe I will be, uh, there's more than one Barney mobile I guess you could call it, I will be taking one of these tours also. Earlier this year I watched in order se uh, season one through five which were when Barney was on the show. So it's all still fresh in my head. In fact, I did the filming locations out in Culver City, California. So it's gonna be nice to just meander around with knowing all the little ins and outs, you know, like the Darlins. Here's their, here's their automobile and the Wally's towing truck. And contrary to opinion, the show did not, well, was not filmed here in North Carolina. All in SoCal. Surprisingly, they did a good, do a good job making it appear like it would be up here in the mountains. These are all little recreations, which I highly approve of. Very cool. Obviously, it's not precise to the recreation would be, for example, Mayberry Hotel up here, which this isn't really a hotel, they're just putting it on the awning. And the show was like a four or five story building, which you never see the top of, only like once or twice in a couple episodes, you only saw first and second floor. One subtle point, which I am picking up on, well, if you look down here on the concrete, you have Aunt B, got Goober, Ernest T, Thelma Lou and others, Miss Crump, but around the side they have constructed the door which was in the show around the, the side of the courthouse there was also a door around this back end. That's a nice touch. And of course Wally's service station. Can't forget about that with the gas pumps out front. The price of the tour is $40, not per person, but per car, cash only, which I'd have to go buy an ATM. But they said the driver could stop in town. I could get some cash out that way. I'm gonna think about it. I did ask if they've added anything new to the tour in the last couple of years. They said they have not. Since I've done it before, back in May of 2017, I'm gonna pass on that because there's still so much else to cover and I can go to all the spots myself and get out and walk around. This is always, this is awesome. This is so good. There's the desk there. It is not to scale obviously, but pretty dang close. There where Barney would sit right over there. Andy here and across would be Otis in the cells, just like the just like the show, the two of them there. 
Yeah, it really kind of puts you in, puts you in the element for sure. And then around the back over here is the room where Barney would sometimes sleep overnight. And a lot happened back in that. I think that might be Otis's hat down there. Always the key that he would reach for here. And he always, for one reason or another, always chose this cell. So you can see there's his photograph there on the wall. And another nice touch is they have the windows up on either side, right up there. And because Ernest T. Bass would always throw rocks and bricks through windows, they have this as a dedication in memory of Ernest T. right down here, a brick. And here's a nice little Easter egg. Aunt Bee's kerosene cucumbers over here in the corner. She was very proud of her pickles. And of course also was the Justice of the Peace as well. And there's Andy's typewriter, the phone right there where, where Barney was always talking to Juanita. Drove about a mile, maybe three quarters of a mile to downtown and next to the Chamber of Commerce here at the Granite City is this guitar which has been painted there with his likeness and a lot of the eating establishments are also themed this place is called barney's cafe home of the barney burger i saw a sign and decided to walk down this side of the hill in hopes of this being what i think it is and it totally is a sports pub and grill by the name of the loaded goat Mine and probably others would back me up on this. One of one of my favorite episodes. It's a good one. The, the TNT Dynamite Goat episode. In a lot of ways, they don't even call it Mount Airy. Even the music center goes by the fictional name, not the real town name. And you gotta love this. The Snappy Lunch. It really does exist. It's a real place. Right there on the door, written Snappy Lunch. And of course, Floyd's Barbershop. You just picture Floyd sitting out here, gossiping, spinning some yarns. I think everyone loved Floyd. I got a booth inside, snappy lunch. Looking at the menu here. I think I'm just going to get the pork sandwich. Does that come with anything other than the sandwich? No. Um, we don't. We, the only side that we would have is a bag of potato chips. Okay, I'll do a bag of. Just plain potato chips, then. Okay. And the sweet tea. Thank you. This is what they're known for, what is advertised out front, so I went with the pork chop sandwich. It is it's a, it's a pretty good sized portion. Look at this thing. Not bad for the price. That is that is immense. It has slaw. I'm seeing some slaw there, tomato. Oh yeah, look at all that goodness down in there. That's This is only like $4. And then a cup of sweet tea there and some some chips over in here as well. Yeah, that looks like a delicious, a delicious meal here at the Snappy Lunch. Looks so good. That was delicious. It is now, it's now raining. It's raining out here. There's a pretty neat old school theater there across the way called the Earl. Nice. Obviously not vintage. If it is, it's been repainted, but this Coca-Cola advertisement here on the side of the brick is always a, a nice a nice thing to see. There's a whole area here about a block away for public parking, and there's another guide map there that shows all the stores. We'll get back in my rental and head over to the museum I started at and look around showing where I am. You are here. That's me. I'm a smiley. And the main area here where all the stores goes along Main Street. I just need to drive over back down to that area. I believe they do a festival annually. One of these years I'd like to come up and check that out. Hours for the museum are 9 to 5 every day, with the exception of Sundays, which are from 1 to 5 p.m., a little shorter hours on Sundays. Oh, check this out. This little sidecar for the motorcycle. Has the department emblem on the side. Gotta get inside, it's raining. 
after paying admission, I have to peel this off and put it on my on my torso. This is how they know that I that I paid. Right here, this badge. Okay, looks like the first of those celebrations took place on June 1st of 57. There he is in a car in the parade going through through town there. Here is a shirt worn by him on the show, Screen Use, and the letter back in 2008 that he wrote signifying that it is authentic. It's tough to see because of the, the glare and the reflection of everything around it, but that's it. No way. These are the original signs in front of the door, the Justice of the Peace and the Share. Now, this is not original, nor are the doors, but both of these were in Culver City used for the filming in front of the courthouse. For real, this, this blows my mind just a little bit. That is... So these are seen in all the different episodes. That is incredible, right? Another screen used item, one of Barney's two salt and pepper suits. This could be seen in the episode from the first, first season, fifth episode. There is Otis' hat and suit, the one here on the bottom. This hat started to decompose, but he still carried it around in his suitcase with him for photo ops if need be. But this is all screen used. Wow, the keys that would be between the two cells. The secondary one was in the one called Cousin Virgil, where he whittled it down to escape. Yeah, that, these, are the, these are the keys. Even though some of these items are a recreation, this chair Don not sat in in every episode. Okay, the gavel, the block, the eagle over here, and this is the actual telephone. Right there, that's the real deal. I'm getting all this information from the little items written down here, all the info on it. Here's a miniature recreation of his his home here in town on 711 East Haymore Street. More precisely, the corner of Rockford and Haymore, which was also used and mentioned in an episode with the crossing guard, even though it's a real place here in Mount Airy. It's also fictional for Mayberry. Where I'm going is at the base of that water tower. Right there, top of the hill. In fact, it's at the very base of the water tower. This residential neighborhood, top of the hill, is Andy's home place, where he resided. A nice little porch swing out here. Well, not a porch swing, a yard swing. And I'm happy to say I will be staying here overnight. This will be my residence for the evening. In Andy's house. Here's a photograph of him and his wife. Quite some time ago. Walking out of the front. The state's guests are occupying the house. Please respect their privacy. That's me, I'm the guest. I'm going in. I made it. Give a little tour. Uh, there's a lot of photographs themed along the walls. The bird cage there. Very quaint in here. Like this retro lamp. Over here on the shelving are not only a game board game down here but also VHS of some of the episodes, as well as DVDs from season five. So I might be watching some of those. Kinda have to, just sit over there. 
on the chair there is a television with a DVD player. Nice squeaky floors. Gives it the proper ambiance. Looks like it used to be a back porch which has been converted into the second bedroom. Back here, there's a bed, a couple of lamps. It's just me staying for the evening, so I don't need two beds, but that is the way it is presented. And along the side is classic car advertisement alerts. The kitchen is incredible. Look at that. You got a microwave, coffee maker over there. You got some of the antique items here along the wall. The stove. Yeah, look at that thing. It's a hot point. Nice backyard. With a picnic table. Nice tree with the leaves changing, falling. And then the main bedroom here, which was not the add-on from the back porch. I don't know if the furniture is original. Looks like it could have been. Got the hats up top here. The head of the bed is the Lord's Supper. There is a security system. Looks to be a remodeled bathtub as well. Oh, there's the there's the statue I was at a little earlier. One thing about staying here, you got to get used to the tours going by. And the, the antique vehicles. I guess they are still doing them in the rain. Copy of his birth certificate here. Born in 1926 at 181 South Street is written there. Typed it in. See how far it was. About three quarters of a mile from here. Didn't move into this home until he was six years old. And here's a photograph a clipping from a newspaper of his parents, and the headline reads, The Griffiths are leaving Mount Airy. He lived here up until he went to college at the age of 18. He came back to visit pretty often in his later adult life until they left in 1966. Some nice little tie-ins all through here, including, and there's Opie with a birdcage. And next to the birdcage. The cost was $175 for one night. You know, one day, check in at three, and then check out the next morning. $175 plus taxes and fees came to about $197. For just me, that's, that's a little much. However, you know, if you had a bunch of people staying here, you know, share the couch, some different, couple different bedrooms, Especially during the Mayberry days, which might be tough to book it because I'm sure it's a very popular time period It would it would be worthwhile and it would add to the experience to be here. It's pretty awesome This states From 35 to 66 was when the family resided I'll take a peek I already looked in here on the show How great is this? This wallpaper. Here's an artistic rendering of the home. Right there. Something very fascinating over here as well. There is a signature right there, an autograph. Well, it was taken from the guest book and he has signed his name there in October, on October 16th of 2002 when it was an Airbnb, which it still kind of is, rented out by one of the local hotels here. He came back to stay. So imagine 
staying as a guest in your former home that you grew up in and then you sign the guest book that has to be an interesting feeling but that signature is there on the wall obviously probably a different table but I always I'm always picturing how history is and you know how a family would have been in here you know, it's, e it's really easy to think of modern day think of current situations as far as looking at this and thinking oh it's just a it's just an older home but this that was the family room over there it still is this was always going to be the dining room the kitchen over there so there probably was a table I could even walk over there to where the kitchen table was most likely through here could have even been kind of tucked away in that corner however just think of the conversations that were had talking about aspirations hopes dreams oh is that another Barney was out there. Yeah, very rainy. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, Please subscribe by doing so. Helps keep you in the loop and update on future uploads here on this channel. Take it a step further, ring that notification bell, and if you enjoyed this particular episode, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care. We'll see you in the next video. The vlog is over. I stand corrected. This is the entire series, every season. I'm gonna watch a, quite a few of my favorites. Loaded Goat, Ant Bee's Pickles, Citizen's Arrest, and maybe a couple others. Nice.